Good evening folks, it's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Saturday, July 28th, 1047 p.m. Mountain Time 2018. You're looking at Fisher 8. There have been some breakouts. The Lay's Plume is steady as ever and the output is ongoing, equal to any of the last 90 days. And thankfully, it is not moving further to the west towards Isaac Halle Park. It has stopped. It looks like it's even cooling there. But upper towards the fissure, up towards fissure 8, towards the beginning of the lava flow, there have been breakouts. So they're warning people to stay away. Now, there's some excellent footage of the size of the caldera coming out here. Here's a sulfur vent. Look at the sulfur deposits there. Amazing. Look at the size of this caldera. And let's just hold it there and get rid of the close captioning. Now, if you notice the small, just a small smoker here, there's not a lot of steam coming out of here. We'll go back to it. You can see how big this caldera has been. And this currently is the longest most voluminous eruption since records have been kept. This is going back to the 1600s. We can't find anything this big. So it is our estimation that this caldera is going to continue to collapse and in, enlarge to the maximum size and even continue further here. You can see this drop down feature here. So that's what we're predicting here at the channel. And it's not fear mongering. We're basing this information on facts and science. We want you to prepare for the inevitable. If this caldera collapses to 10 times its size, it's not going to affect the planet or humanity. This is not something to worry about. It's something to worry about if you live in Hawaii. Heads up. Now, this is coming from a book that uh, I read regularly. It's a daily reflection, and it's today's daily reflection, July 28th. A stone cutter may strike a rock 99 times with no apparent effect, not even a crack on the surface. Yet, with the hundredth blow, the rock splits in two. It was not the final blow that did the trick, but all that had gone before. So I implore you to continue to hit the rock of the global warming alarmists that you're trying to penetrate because it is not the final blow that splits the rock. It's the 99 before. Three more reported dead in massive California fire that has now killed five. The car fire in Shasta County has forced as many as 38,000 residents to evacuate and as many as 6,000 homes are threatened, officials say. There is the footprint of what was once a home. Two children and their grandmother were killed in the massive car fire in Northern California, Shasta County, according to NBC Bay Area, which confirmed the news with a family member. Five-year-old James Roberts, four-year-old Emily Roberts, and great-grandmother Melody Bledsoe were preparing to evacuate a home in Redding, California and called police when the fire struck and all three perished, according to reports. It is absolutely tragic. Wildfires abound. Man charged with intentionally starting nine of the Southern California fires is now the most hated man in humanity. Also referred to as directed energy weapon. That's him. Riverside County, a 32-year-old man has been charged with intentionally starting nine Southern California fires, including one that has chased thousands of residents from mountain communities. This directed energy weapon is a scumbag. And that is tonight's first boom. Yep, that's true, little Kim. Worse red tide in more than a decade leaves droves of animals dead in southwest Florida beaches. Heads up, Anthony. That's my brother. He lives in Lee County, I believe. Red tide leaves droves in southwest Florida beaches. The worst red tide event in more than a decade has left droves of dead animals in the beaches and is un- Precedented. Whew, heads up. Wait till you see this. It's going to blow your mind. Oh, it's going to blow your face. 
An unprecedented number of sea turtles have been found dead on southwest Florida beaches. The red tide event is said to be the worst since 2006, which was also at a solar minimum. Cosmic ray flux much? I doubt it. We'll get to the science in a minute, kids. It's not rocket science. It's a It'll blow your mind. Or blow your face, however you want to look at it. Why can't I go back here? Humans are at risk at well... According to the Fort Myers News Press, scores of sea turtles have been collected in Lee and Collier counties over the past week. Hundreds of others may have also died from this particularly strong red tide event because they could smell it. We took in four new sea turtles yesterday. Took in, you mean scraped up. Boo, ew, stinky. Other animals that are being affected include pelicans, double-crested cormorants, and mallards and mottled ducks. Experts say the wildlife found dead on the beaches or on the surface of the ocean is only a fraction of the actual toll from the red tide. Just like a single letter that you write to your politician equals 1,000 in their eyes of voters, and it'll scare the ch out of them. So keep writing those letters. Most of the dead animals sink to the bottom of the ocean, and those that are floating smell like hell. Humans are at risk at well. The National Weather Service issued a red tide beach hazard advisory Friday for Lee, Charlotte, Sarasota counties through Monday. It's definitely an advisory that people who have respiratory issues when exposed to the algal blooms, attorney heard at NWS, meteorologist Ruskin, told the newspaper. Beachgoers in Fort Myers area, including Sanibel Captiva, not only faced the dead fish and the red tide, they were kept from enjoying the beach because of rough seas and riptides. Oh, God forbid. What are the poor people doing? And that's boom. <sighs> You move there, you deal with it. It's the five o'clock gray hair buffet. Hey, new feature to the channel, hair, hail map coming to you now. This is coming from interactive hail maps. I have no connection to them. I'm not promoting it. I'm getting it for free. So the hail map on Friday, July 27th. And when you click on this, these numbers, oh, look at how badass that is. Watch, let's do it again. Boom. No, it didn't work. But you see how they calculate. So the number of the impacted houses in the last 24 hours is 190,000 with hail one inch or larger. 9,000 impacted with 1.5 inch hail or larger. 2.5, 1,000 homes. Now, do you see, are you picking up what we're putting down? 13 homes impacted by 2.5 inch or larger hail. This interactive hail map is killer. And you can get a free version in your mailbox. Rapid City, hail. Billings, this is yesterday, hail. Baltimore, hail. Scotts Bluff, Nebraska, Omaha, Garden City, Kansas, Hayes, Kansas, Schenectady, Gillette, Wyoming, Phoenix, Arizona, North Platte, Colby, Kansas. These are growing zones, kids. Syracuse, New York, Denver, Colorado, Virginia Beach, Yuma, Pierre, and on and on. You know it has to be a lot of cities because let's check the numbers. 190,000 homes were impacted by hail yesterday, one inch or larger. We're going to be keeping our eyes on this. When this number goes to 1 million, if you're not prepared, you're... Yes, it's true. <laughs> Weather Ready Nation map. Let's get to it. Scorching heat and fire weather threats the West. Severe storms in the plains. Dangerous heat in California and the Southwest will build north into the Pacific Northwest this weekend. The heat combined with very dry conditions and locally gusty winds is increasing fire weather threats. Not that we need it, but boom, whew, you're on fire. It will exacerbate ongoing fire activity as well as sparking new fires. As we predicted weeks ago, the Northwest is going to be burning late into October. Severe storms in the Central Plains may produce very large hail damaging winds and a few tornadoes. Thank God we have the new hail maps. I know, I have a headache. Typhoon slams into Japan, approaches disaster hit regions. Not good news, really good calves. A, a powerful typhoon slammed into Central Japan early Saturday, Sunday prompting local authorities to issue evacuation orders with western areas recently devastated by floods and landslides in the storm's crosshairs. This is Typhoon Jangardi, packing winds of 110 miles per hour, making landfall in Isle de Mi prefecture around 1 a.m. That's 1600 GMT Saturday, according to the nation's public broadcaster at NHK. <coughs> it hasn't really rained since April. 
record drought grips Germany's breadbasket. This is after the carrot crisis hitting the UK, which is now following a deluge, which is impacting that region. Look at these homo sapiens. You thought I was going there, didn't you? That's boom. To the face! Neither northern Belgian job in Germany. Withered sunflowers, scorched wheat fields, stunted corn stalks. And if I can do my best German, the farmlands of northern Germany have borne the brunt of this year's extreme heat. The regular rainfall triggering the epical drought. And that's a heads up. As the blazing sun beats down, combined harvesters working in the normally fertile breadbasket of Saxony and Holt in the former communist East Germany kick up giant clouds of the dust they rolled over the cracked earth. It hasn't really rained since April and it's the main growth period for our grains. Good God, what does Armstrong Economics have to say about the whole nonsense? Australian drought getting really bad and the tilt of the earth is getting really tilty, according to Mutin Milankovic. Farmers in South Australia have been forced to feed sheep with onions, which are high in sulfur and not good for sheep. <laughs> These onions, unfortunately, were rejected for commercial sale due to the ongoing crisis called the Grand Solar Minimum. If you haven't heard about it, kids, not only are we in a Grand Solar Minimum, but we're also in an, yes, it's true, an empire collapse period called the end of the interstadial. We call it the ongoing end of the warm period. Welcome to the new ice age. Thanks to the ongoing Grand Solar Minimum and the sun, which is shutting down the waning magnetosphere. Kids, it's only going to get worse. Historical records, we're sharing them with you, and we're going to get to that. This Australian drought is only getting worse, with Antarctica is separate from East Antarctic by major mountain range. Now, currently, the axial tilt of the middle of the range is third and final of the blah, blah, blah. And come read about it. <coughs> I studied 30 years on the Milankovitch cycles. I know them like the back of my hand. Belfast, they were just really dry. Deluged by one month's worth of rain in just an hour. Soak it in. According to the Met Office, 88.2 millimeters of rain was recorded at Belfast International Airport this afternoon, which is well over Northern Ireland's July average of 81.2. Little Kim? Yeah, that's boom. To the face of science. The Met Office upgraded its weather warning to amber in danger of life for Saturday afternoon, as well as disruption of roads and rail networks. Buildings were at risk of damage from flash flooding and lightning strikes. Heavy thunderstorm downpours are forecast to continue in the western areas, as well as parts of Wales, as changeable weather replaces the heat wave much of the UK has endured through the carrot crisis. What the f*** is going on? Maybe it's the modern Eddie Minimum. Who the f*** is Jack Eddie? Monsoon rains displaced tens of thousands in Myanmar. Yes, it's true. Adapt 2030. David Dubine is swimming through the muck just to get the melons. Floodwaters have displaced tens of thousands of people in southeast Myanmar. Authorities and volunteers scramble to provide food and aid to the victims, including to Adapt 2030. Heavy monsoon rains have pounded Karen State, Moan State, Bago region in recent days and show no signs of abating, raising fears of the worst might have yet to become. Yes, it is getting worse. Much getting worse. <laughs> How worse? So worse you can't worsen it because it's really bad. <laughs> to the worst. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, we're back. That was crazy. Almost like everything got erased. Hey, if you're not part of my Facebook community, <coughs> pardon my coughing. If you're not far, part of the Facebook community, plasma geology, solar shutdown. Earlier today, there was a blood echo out here and I predicted this. It was a 6.0 at 578.5 kilometers and it was followed by a 6.4 in the same region. That's not based on accidental mathematicals. That's based on science. Coming up at 7.5. This would be the minimum exposure of this flexure. So there is still a 50 plus potential for a major quake in this region as well as this. It could be a series of pre-shocks to a larger shock. But I predicted when this occurred in 12 hours a larger quake to occur and it did occur. 
and it has been followed by aftershock. So the 6.4 is the largest expression of this quake on the surface. So probably nothing to worry about. Kilauea caldera continues to collapse. 5.3 caldera collapse, not a volcanic eruption. They still haven't gotten to that edit function on their website. Heads up, USGS. Now, a lot of you are asking what a blot echo is and how did you predict that quake? I'll leave you links to this, a clawed blot on the landscape. And here it simply shows that how energy at depth can be translated to the surface in a larger format. Geophysicist Claude Blot in the 1960s suggested that earthquakes transfer energy upwards from deep inside the planet instead of being produced or felt near the crust surface. <coughs> now, geologists like myself believe his work because we just used it and the prediction came true. This energy is emanating from the Mohorovic discontinuity down at Blot Echo Depth where the plates are thought to be riding above a slightly molten type of material between the mantle and the crust boundary. This can be as deep as 600 kilometers, sometimes up to 620, some of the deepest earthquakes ever recorded. Just Google deepest earthquake ever recorded and you'll get it. Worldwide Volcano News Update, we have Sakurajima uh, exploding back-to-back -back twice in the last 24 hours, as well as Sabankaya and Aoba, which is Ambe, and there is now a full evacuation of the island. Solar minimum deepens. The sun has been without spots for 30 days. We do have an active region coming over the western limb here, and, or the eastern limb, and we're going to be watching it move forward. It could be the first sunspot to end the longest uh, period since 2009, in which case the battery is running low, in which case the next stretch of days should extend past 100 days. And I predicted a stretch of over a year of sun spotless days starting in the middle of 2018 or in the middle of 2019 extending all the way through 2020. So from July 2019 through July 2020, zero sunspots predicting here today on the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Live, resurrecting Maunder's ghost, John, Jack, Eddie, the Maunder Minimum, and the rise of a uh, Delitant Astrophysicist. Now, during the 70s, widespread scientific interest in the risk of climate change prompted John A., Jack, Eddie, an astrophysicist with the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, which is right up the road here, to investigate whether sunspots could be used to predict the future climate changes. Now, methodical, methodologically, Eddie's investigation included the same as ours here, using historical documentation. And what he uncovered was a large-scale cyclic nature of the sun, not just the sunspot cycle. <coughs> now, Heinrich Schwab discovered what appeared to be a decadal sunspot cycle and the existence of which inspired generations of astrophysicists to more precisely estimate its length. We now know it to be 11 years, as long as 14 years, and as short as 9. It's variable. Just like the temperature on Earth isn't linear. It's cyclic, just like the sun. But the sun cycles, just like Milankovitch cycles, are nested in a hierarchy of other cycles. The Bond cycle. The relational cycle of John Casey et al. So there are larger scale cycles afoot, and that's what John Eddy was trying to pick up, what we're putting down. The only problem was Eddie identified what he cast as a conspiracy of willful ignorance on the part of the staid and conservative astronomical community, as we encounter today. By utilizing Eddie's private handwritten notes as they appeared in undergraduate lectures, public speeches, and academic talks, as well as his appreciation for the seminal views of sociologists of science, Thomas Kuhn, it has been shown here that Eddie sought to rectify the injustice by proposing a contrasting vision of science as an interdisciplinary, collaborative, and creative process, exploring the ignored areas between scientific disciplines, exactly as we're doing here. John Jack Eddie was right. 
Yes, it's true. And so is the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. I will leave you links. Here is some increasing electrical activity being sent in by one of our subscribers. Absolutely insane. And that is a boom. I know. Oh my goodness. To the face of electricity. Whew. 30 lost ways of survival from the 1880s. We should all learn community. Number one, we were not meant to survive in isolation forever. Two, small towns. Three, we do not dial 911. Four, shooting your dinner. Six, stockpiling wood. Seven, brain tanning. You take the brain out and you rub it on the skin. Clothing, blacksmithing, preserving. I'll leave you links. Indigenous foods people made during famines, plus a link of historical famines, including bark bread. How about uh, seed bread made with motor oil? Are you kidding me? <laughs> nope. To the face. You can read about it. <clears throat> I'm not making it up, and I'm not making up the Arctic sea ice thickness is now curving up to... 30 year highs and if you've seen some of the youtube channels coming out with the amazing amount of melting that's happened in the last six weeks that happens every six weeks in the summer you fucking idiots but if you actually look at the arctic volume we are above the 2004 average Facts, they suck, but they're true. Especially if you're an <laughs> anthropogenic global warming tool shed. Isn't that right, little Kim? I know, it's a boom. To the face of science. Now, you know what's a danger to polar bears? Not global warming. Cruise ship workers. Now, this cruise ship went up to northern Svalbard, which is in the middle of nowhere, and they docked there. A polar bear attacked one of them because they shouldn't be there, and they shot him. So, number one threat to polar bears, cruise ship operators. It's a sad day. Commissioned to assess the threat to the United States from electromagnetic pulse attack. Here is the links to the EMP commission. Here is the link to the Accessing the Threat from EMP Attack, the new Executive Report, EMP Commission Report, full text, mother... Is. I didn't say that. Someone else is here. They're controlling my brain. And if you want to know how we are, <laughs> the next time you're taking it, you can read the PDF. Or report of the Commission to assess the threat to the United States from electromagnetic pulse attack... Critical national infrastructures. Here's 208 more pages to make you shit your pants. <laughs> I'm going to get demonetized. This is insane. How dare you say that? The king of climate fiction makes the left's case for geoengineering even more insane. Kim Stanley Robinson, the most recent novel, images the world rocketed into catastrophic rise in sea levels in a century from now. They have barely risen a millimeter since 1864. But... Just like all alarmists, the truth is the politics of large-scale intervention in the climate system is rarely aligned with the promises of geoengineering. It's true. It's not hard to see why some call geoengineering the big bad fix. How do you define geoengineering? What are the forms? All you chemtrailers thinks it's happening now. Now, here's the problem. Injecting stratospheric aerosols into the atmosphere right now as cosmic rays are increasing, the magnetosphere is waning, and we're cooling is a very bad idea. And if a government goes rogue, we're all... The temperature will rapidly drop, and no one will have an answer, but we will. We'll know that some government went rogue and increased... The effect to the face. Now, every thousand years, an empire ends. And the one you're living is coming to an end now. They pretend like it's not happening. Nothing to see here. The disinformation increases. 
The Maya call it the quickening. You're living it. Technology is inedible. The time is now to start preparing. If you want to survive and thrive in the future, number one is community. And if you read what some people ate historically during famines, it includes their children. I'm sure you would much rather eat shard. Start growing now. Be safe. We love you.